Hello and welcome to Mr. Stanger's Chess Academy. This is the intermediate course, lesson six. And what I thought we'd do today is we would um, go back and look over all the things we've learned so far, condense it together into one lesson and uh, to help us remember it and to see how it can help us to win a game of chess. So we have looked at um, three different parts of the game. Whilst we've been learning, we've been looking at the opening part of the game, the middle game and the end game. So let's start by looking at the opening um so when you start look you're faced with the your first move in a game of chess we've talked about how the most important squares are these four squares here and so we want to try and move pieces either into these four squares or so they attack those four squares we've talked about the importance of trying to develop your minor pieces and get them out into the battlefield and we've talked about the importance of castling as soon as possible to get your king away from danger so for white, there are two um, simple openings that you can learn off by heart to help you achieve these objectives. One of them is the Italian opening, also known as the Gioco Piano. Um, and it goes like this. You move your pawn to e4. Always a good opening. Always a good way to start a game of chess. It moves one piece into these four central squares and puts pressure onto another central square. Black would probably do the same for the same reasons, occupies one of those squares and attacks a central square. We then will move out our knight. So this attacks this pawn here and also um, puts pressure on one of these central squares. So it's a good second move and it's developing one of our minor pieces and it's removing one piece to help us in future maybe castle. Black will probably respond by doing this to protect this pawn here and to put pressure on this central square. Then with the Italian opening, we move the bishop and we move we move the bishop to c4, which puts pressure on this central square, but also attacks this weak f7 pawn, but also allows us to castle. Black might respond maybe with this move here. And then uh, with the Italian opening here, we would castle, getting our king away from danger. Another option that you could do, as we looked at last time, is we could try, instead of castling, be more aggressive. And we could choose to move our knight to g5, because this uh, knight is stopping the queen covering the square here. So we can safely move our, our knight to g5 which means we might be able to get away with the fried liver attack uh, next move by moving our knight to f7, forking the queen and the knight. So those are, those are two options with the Italian opening, uh, depending on how you're feeling, depending on uh, how good your opponent is, how aggressive you think they're going to play. So from this position, you can either castle or you could go for the fried liver attack. So that's the Italian opening. And then the other opening we've looked at is very similar, but it's called the Spanish opening or the Arroy Lopez. So this starts in the same way, pawn to e4, into those four squares, covering this one. Black will respond like that. We then move the knight, attacking the pawn. Black then moves this knight here, defending the pawn. But now we move our bishop out, but we don't move it to c4, we move it to c5. And that is the Spanish opening. So the idea is, is that we're going to take this knight here, which means that this pawn no longer has a defender, which means that then we can take the uh, pawn there. Um, so black might develop, um, for example, maybe moving this pawn forward here to protect this. And then at this point, again, we can castle if we choose. OK, and then and then from this position, we would move out our other minor pieces. So these are these are two um, quick to learn openings that we can use to start uh, to start our games of chess. OK, so no longer looking at board going, oh, what do I do? We also look quickly, if you remember, at fool's mate. So if again uh, you think you're going to get away with it and that your uh, opponent might be quite an experienced chess player, then we could begin a game of chess like this. So instead of the knight, we move our bishop 
to c4, uh, and they might do this. We're then moving our queen out either to f3 or to h5. We might do this, and then we can. I'm having problems with my mouse today, and and again, and then uh, we can move up, move our queen here, and get checkmate. Okay, so a range of things to do at the start of a game of chess. If we were black, then we looked at an opening, which we could, a good defense to use if we're black. So that was the two knights defense. So if the opponent does e4, you move e4. Um, if, uh, if then they move out, if they move out their knight, then we move out our knight, and then um, if, for example, they come and do the uh, Roy Lopez, then we can move out our knight as well. So we've got here two knights that are putting lots and lots of pressure onto these central squares, um, and it's a good, strong opening. Okay, so there's an opening for white, and there's an opening for black. We've looked at how to get a fool's mate, just just one little tip if you want to prevent yourself falling victim to fool's mate then one of the surefire ways is to just simply instead of moving this this pawn um two spaces we actually only just move it one here so that if this bishop comes out here it's no longer directly attacking f7 okay so you might want to do that another way to stop fool's mate if you've moved two forward and move the bishop here if you move your knight um, as we would anyway in the two knight defense um, here to f6 then if the queen comes out here it can't attack f7 if it comes out here it will be taken okay so there's two ways that you can stop falling for the fool's knight defense uh, for the fool's mate attack okay so that's the openings Hopefully you've got a, a range of strategies there that you can use to start the game. So we talked as well about um, going into the middle game. So in the middle game, remember we, we've looked at a range of things to look out for, like um, forks. So when we have um, the knight can attack two pieces at once, or it might be that a bishop is moved into a position where it can move two, it can take two pieces at once. So look out for the opportunity to do that. Or um, skewers, where you, uh, where one piece has to move out of the way, and you can take the piece behind. All right. So look out for for um, skewers and forks, and of course pins where you move a piece so you might move the bishop say to here and then that would pin the knight here you wouldn't be able to move okay so do look out in the middle game in your tactics for forks pins and skewers uh, to to capture material and to get the advantage on your opponent Remember the value of material. So pawns are one point, bishops and knights are three points, rooks are five points, and queens are nine points. So if in the middle game you can work out a tactic, either a fork or a skewer, where you would take their rook in exchange for your bishop, then you're going to have then you've got an advantage. And as you go through to the end game, you'll see that you'll have uh, more winning opportunities. So. If you're in this uh, situation, just for, just as a, a quick example, and you think, oh, should I take this rook? Well, of course you should, because the rook's worth five, and the bishop's worth three. So you take the rook, pawn takes the bishop, you are up strategically if you're black. Okay, so those are things that we've looked at to, uh, to do in the middle game. Finally, uh, just, to have, just to recap on some key end game ideas, we have s looked at how you can get checkmate with two rooks. 
uh, if you remember, what's called the lawn mower, mate, because we are we are mowing we are mowing stripes of of lawn um, across the board. So in this situation, it's check the king can't move here because of this uh, rook here. So it has to go up here, mowing the next stripe of lawn there with our laser beams has to move up and then this uh, rook moves here the king again has to move up check check has to move up and check so if you can take all of your opponent's pieces and leave yourself two rooks then you can always every game get checkmate if you just uh, have finished the game of chess with um, a king and a queen, then if you remember, we get checkmate by slowly creating the box. So we move our queen to, the, to make sure we're creating the smallest box possible. And then we slowly close that box. Uh, so you move here and slowly close the box. Here, we want to make sure we don't get stalemate. So if we moved to F7, for example, then the king wouldn't be able to move anywhere without being taken. So that would be a draw. So we want to be careful for that. So um, maybe we would move our, our queen here, creating a box. And the king's got these two squares to move in. And as he moves, we're going to bring up the other king so that we can do the kiss of death checkmate pattern. My mouse today is being very irritating. Um, again, we need to be a bit, little bit careful of fool's mate in these situations, because if we moved our king here, then the king wouldn't be able to move to this square, and that would be stalemate. Did I say fool's mate? I meant stalemate. Uh, it's, this, it's, the, it's my mouse, it's upsetting me, it's putting me off. Um, so uh, so you might want to move a king, queen here. So then move the king there, move the king there, move the king, that king here, and there we have it, the kiss of death checkmate. Okay, so whenever you are down to just your king and your queen, and you could you know you take all of, all of your opponent's pieces, it's just the king and queen, you can always get checkmate. Okay, you just need to make sure you're doing it properly, doing it with the box, and don't fall into the temptation of just going check, check all the time, because that gets you nowhere um, and, and it will be a draw. So you need to do, do the box. Also with this, uh, if you've just got, if you've just got down to a pawn and a king, so you've just got one point up, you can actually get this pawn to the end, turn it into a queen, and then you've won. So, um, so see if you can find out ways to do that as well, and we'll learn more about that in future lessons. And the final thing uh, we learned about the end game was how to get checkmate with a rook and a king. And remember, this was very similar to how to, to get checkmate with a um, with a queen and a king, you just need to be a bit more patient with it. It takes a little bit longer. So you find the narrowest box, and then you bring up your king sooner in order to support your um, your rook, because the black king will try and attack your rook and take it. A king can never take a queen, so it won't do that. But if he's got a rook, you need to support it quicker. But it's the same principle. You just close the box patiently. Oh, I don't know what that king's doing there. Patiently shuffle your your rook and your king around so that you're you're closing the box. There we are. Let's close the box there. And we're closing the box again. Um, a lot a lot easier to avoid stalemate with just a rook and a king. Uh, so we're closing the box here. Oh, check even and then and then the king might go there and then we've got checkmate all right so uh so slowly close the box slowly work the king towards the edge of the board or the corner of the board and look for one of these uh rook king checkmating patterns
So hopefully that's a useful recap, seeing how we can use our openings, our uh, tactics in the middle game, and what we've learned about end games to bring that all together to win a game of chess. But uh, just think, using these endings, if we can take as many of our opponent's pieces as possible, leave ourselves with just a rook or maybe just a queen or even just a pawn and then turn it into a queen then we can win the game of chess thank you for all your hard work uh, this half term and um, make sure you play lots of chess over the half term holidays and there'll be we learn much more about game of chess um, after the break